Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess. They were playing e4 as per usual. My opponent is going to respond with drum roll, please. They go for a Sicilian defense. Okay. We're going to go for a Mengarini because, of course, we're going to play a Mengarini Sicilian. If they go knight c6, we will be playing b4, lashing out like this. And basically, if they play anything else, okay, we're going to play h4. This is a, uh, a Hikaru Magnus game, I think. Or maybe, okay, I think this is a Hikaru Magnus game, kind of happened recently. And then Magnus, who was playing black, said he hoped Hikaru went for this h4 idea. I think, something like this. Bishop comes here, we go h5. This is kind of the idea, I believe. Now, I'm going to leave this tension here. I don't want to take, because if takes, rooks come off the board, I haven't really achieved too much. If the knight comes to f6, which it might want to, maybe then we play h6, kick the bishop back, and have some fun. Who knows? I'm going to start with knight c3, though. And this is just a really, really interesting idea that I, I, I got because I think I watched a video where Magnus Carlsen was in this position as black and was hoping that Hikaru would play h4, h5. I'll find a clip and I'll insert it in the video here and hopefully not get copyright striked. Let's do this. Now I go c5. Is he going to go h4? Oh, I hope it goes h4. The system is actually not bad. Like White can go for a quick h4 here and uh, it's not stupid. E6 is interesting. Knight F3? I think Knight F3 makes sense. Angling to try and push D4 at some point, although it is kind of hard to do that right at this minute. But E6, I mean, there's a lot of dark square weaknesses around this, this pawn complex. Generally, when you fianchetto the bishop on this side of the board, you want to play D6 instead. Now the knight moves. I can play H6. I can play H6, and that is a very tempting move. I think the reason they went knight here and like going e6 and developing the knight this way is because if f6 maybe I'll play e5. Or if knight f6, sorry, I'll play e5. I'm doing it. h6. We're running the h pawn. We are claiming some space here. The bishop has to go back to here. Um, I don't think anything else makes sense. You don't want to give me this bishop and completely um, weaken your dark squares like this. Really? I Ah, okay. Now I think that's got to be a bad move. We're going to take. I'm going to take with this pawn, opening up the bishop and the queen. Okay. Here, we're going to hopefully go through a bit of a lesson as to why that is a horrible move. Now, our opponent already, just principally speaking, has invested one and then two moves into developing this bishop onto this lovely fianchetto, this long diagonal, uh, where it's a very strong piece. For them to, provoked by the h-pawn, trade it off for a knight means that this pawn that they've pushed, after we recapture that I'm the one with the dark square bishop and they've played, what they've gone, f5, wow. I mean, they're just leaving gaping holes all in their king side. Bishop g5 is going to completely immobilize this knight forever. I don't know if I go for it now, though, because then, you know, they take here, and I have to move my knight, and maybe it's not so ideal. So maybe I just take here. What are you going to do? If you take with this pawn, there's no way you're surviving. Because then I go like bishop g5, I move my knight, I go queen h5, and you're just getting sliced. So if here takes easy yeah, we're gonna do this all the knight takes oh i'm so stupid but it doesn't matter because bishop g5 anyway the queen's gotta move out this way unless you want to block with one of your knights oh guys i might just i might just put my bishop on g7 oh, okay it is, it is controlled by a knight that is unfortunate um if bishop g5 we might see queen b6 attacking our b pawn i maybe shouldn't have taken this i'm not entirely sure maybe i should have pushed past that could have been interesting. And then going like this and putting my bishop on f6. I really regret not pushing past. Okay, doesn't matter. We are gonna we are gonna come back from that maybe small mistake. Um now, where does this bishop belong? I don't know, like here. Maybe I'll then just take this knight, honestly. You know what? We're gonna go for this. Bishop d3. I think that is where the bishop belongs. If we go here, we get hit with d5. If we go here, we get hit with you know a6. Maybe I could trade the bishop for the knight. But honestly, I'm thinking we tear this king open. Okay, they go for d5. Wow. There's a lot of a lot of committal play for someone whose king is very much still in the center. And with no hopes of castling king side safely. I really want to take for some reason. In fact, I know the reason. If I take, take, bishop g5. If you go to b6, this pawn hangs. And if I take and you take with this, then this diagonal is horrible. We're going to take this. We're going to take this because I think if you take this way, it's disgustingly bad. Because this diagonal, h5 to the king here, becomes really weak. And if you take like this, then the e-files open. And I could even castle. 
and play rookie one. But the second that Newcastle here, I mean, first of all, let's just point out, they're still one, two, three moves away from being castled here. Okay, okay, okay. Do I go bishop g5? Where can the queen move? Let's just let's just be rigorous about this. The queen goes here, fine, I don't really care. It's in the way of the bishop, I don't think that's a great move. Queen goes here, similar thing. The only thing I'm worried about is a queen here, sorry, if bishop to g5, queen to b6, attacking my weak b2 pawn. But then maybe I even just go check. Yeah, guys, we're going, we're going like this. We're going bishop g5 first, and then I'm looking at queen e2 check and castling like this. And if even if queen b6, we go check. I mean, I can go check anyway now, right? Queen comes here. I mean, they wanted to hold on to the d-pawn, I guess. But if I go check, what well, you can't block. I mean, I guess you actually you can block the queen. Takes, takes, castles queen side. I kind of don't want to trade the queens off, though. I, I sort of want to give this check with a rook, because if, if check here, they can... Uh, if check on e2, sorry, they can block with the queen. And I'm just not so convinced by that. Because then there's a forced queen trade. I mean, we can't do anything about that. I might be a little more patient. Now, they didn't, they didn't apply immediate pressure onto my position with queen b6, which I don't think would have been a good move, but, like, it would have at least applied some pressure to consider... This, I don't think, does anything too meaningful. I'm very happy to go queen e2 and castle queen side, which is exactly what I'm going to do. We're not going to rush with any check. We're going to castle queen side leisurely, doubling the queen and the uh, rook here, creating a battery towards the pawn on d5, which isn't so strong. The king is very much still in the center and cannot castle until this bishop says so. Um, I mean, of course, again, you can castle king side. I'm just convinced that that can't be a good move with my h6 pawn here. <laughs> what? Fair. Fair enough. We're going to castle queenside. No questions asked. This is hanging with check currently. I'm assuming my opponent will defend it with the bishop. Then maybe I do this. I'm just feeling like long term. There's too many pawns pushed here and too much of a pawn stabbing you in the side. That's still hanging. I just take. I mean, hello. The knight, the queen, the rook. Okay, so the queen just moves. Now I just fork. What? Hello? I think they want to go in here and try and check maybe, but I'm, I'm saying no, I'm forking the, 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 the central fork with the pawn here. What? Now I take the knight, they go here, I just, I just move my queen. Yeah, this is a win now. This is absolutely a win. The queen goes here, I'm in fact going to give this check to force the trade of the queens. I think we just completely win the game. Oh my god, they don't even try and infiltrate. Now we're just up a piece. This looks beautiful. Although after queen here, there's no, there's no check. So I do have to move my queen. But it doesn't matter that there's no check. I don't know why I'm so stressed about this. Like th this, this doesn't matter at all. Because yes, there's rook here and takes here and maybe some idea of a mate. But by the time you do any of that, I'm going to have gone here and hello. Like my h6 pawn is serving a purpose right there. So I think I will maybe just go queen c3. Yeah. Queen c3, with the idea to potentially force the queen trade, although no, because bishop here. With the main idea, sorry, to go knight e5, hit the queen, and say, where are you going? You have to stay attached to this, because there's ideas of checkmate at some point. I mean, yeah, fair enough, but it's not looking good. It's not looking good. Oh my days, look. Look at this. The queen has one move here, and then comes across to b2. Okay. Also holding this pawn makes sense. Makes sense. What do I do now? Come on. Where's my little finishing blow? There must be something here. My queen's beautiful. Knight, bishop's beautiful. What do I do? Do I bring my rook into d6 maybe and hit the bishop? And hit the pawn? Rook d6, bishop here. Oh, but then I go knight here. I intercept the queen's control. Can I go knight here now? Oh, guys, 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 97. And I just say, yes, this is a free knight. And I can't take with my rook, but you'll take with queen. But I cut the queen off, guys. Guys, knight. D knight to d7. What a lovely move. We step in. If they'd taken it, we would have had checkmate. 
The other idea is, of course, we hit the rook. And if they do this, this pawn is hanging. Now, is there a better move? Maybe I go check. And I feel like the king just moves and it's not as potent. Here, we hit the queen, we hit the bishop. What a move. Oh, that's so nice. I'm very happy about this. Now, yes, there's no, there's not going to be some lolly checkmate here on g7. Maybe I take the glasses off because this is giving me a headache. I'm going to put them on the cat, but just as a reminder that knight d7 just got played. What a lovely move. Um, and I think, honestly, we just take this and then bring the rook in. Like, why not? They can bring the rook in. Any, any takers? I think so. I've also got check, just forcing a trade of a pair of rooks. I just... Mm, I'm not so convinced by that. Like, uh, I mean, it's just a pair of rooks, isn't it? We're going to go rook here. Just bring the rooks to the center. It's just an absolutely aesthetically beautiful position. Yeah, there's this. No, I don't care. Because what, we just run here? Okay, I think now's the right time to go rook d8, takes and takes. Because then if you go check, I can go king here. You go check here. Oh. Yeah, I'll trust the process. We'll do this. I think because after king d2, king e2, you can't take my bishop because, yeah, there's just still the threat of queen g7 mate, which will never go away. Like, you can you can give this check, you can force me up here, and you can go check all you like. But at the end of the day, we just, we're just going to run away with the king. <laughs> we're just going to absolutely run away with the king. Easy stuff. King e2 here. The queen is now hanging. You take the bishop. First of all, your queen's hanging, but secondly, there's this mate on g7. I'm just going to tuck in here. If you go check like this, I just take it. The queen holds this pawn, so the queen just has to step up. That is a depressing move. I could force the trade of the queens, but then I lose a bishop. So that would be a horrible idea. I mean, guys, we're just going king f1. This is so funny. Look at this. You take my bishop, you still get checkmated on g7. Look at that. Just to add, just to, you know what? They're like coming back on just for that. Let's just rerun that. Just taking this and then just running. Okay, I'll be honest, let's stop messing around. I have like 1 minute 30 on the clock. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I could force the trade of the queens. Takes, takes. Then I actually lose a bishop. Okay, let's not do that. Um, let's do this because it's funny. Okay, we need, to, we need to vaguely hurry up. I'm just going to put my bishop here and trade the queens on this diagonal. And then just pre-move the endgame. Bring the rook into e7. Oh my god. Rook e7. Is that a move? No, because here, here. Takes and there's no mate because the queen still holds this. Damn. I feel like we can take here at some point though. My king's completely safe. There's no checks. This is the only check and we hold it. I am threatening just queen b3 to trade off the queens. Wouldn't be the most elegant way to do it, but with 1 minute 14, elegance isn't my uh, top priority right now, I'll be completely honest. We're just going to go here because it's funny. The king just can't move. <laughs> And uh, the queens will come off the board imminently. Unless unless I could do something really cool, but I'm not exactly sure if I can do that. But look, we just got the bishop on g7. There's no way you can ever take this. Um, this is our advantage. I mean, we're up a bishop and a pawn, and they are here and here. That is about as good as a bishop and a pawn as you can ever be up in a game of chess. I mean, some people that might not be much of an advantage, you think, okay, bishop and a pawn, maybe black still has ideas. Look at the state of this bishop and pawn. Rook goes back to the back rank. Okay, we're just, honestly, guys, actually, I could take this. Yeah, we're going to take this pawn. We might as well pick up a pawn with the queen still on the board. And then, I mean, I'm threatening queen e6. Um, if the rook or the queen stops defending this square, I'm threatening rook e8. So the pawn just means they can't do anything. We'll trade the queens off now. I have king e2 if rook d1. I could also work with the rook. It does not matter. And yeah, we are shortly going to convert this win. Um, I'm just going to go here. This rook has just no good moves. Um, now we can go check. Check. Taking here. Yeah, you can take this, but like, why would I care? I'm going to go all the way over and take this pawn. There's no way to defend it. This little structure here is doing really well. And I mean, okay, I'm... <laughs> I'm not so scared about this pawn. We're going to just do this and defend the pawn, uh, but also mainly to unleash this to get past pawn here. You go like this, maybe I go check, you take here. And I go, I'm just going to start pushing these pawns, honestly. Check. 
this is held, we are going to go like this. I mean, what are you doing? Like, what are you actually doing with these with these three measly pieces? One of which is your king, which currently has one legal move. The rook has like such few legal moves. Uh, we're just going to go up here. You go across. I can pick up the last pawn. This is going to be a fairly a fairly trivial conversion. The rook can't come off the defense of this pawn without giving up all hope for the game. I'm just going to be able to take here now. And then, honestly, we're going to go here and here just for the just for the memes. Actually, one sec, I can't pre-move that just in case I lose my rook. But it would have been a great pre-move. It just it just completely solidifies the bishop in here. There's just nothing my opponent can do. Now we can bring our king. Maybe I'm going to keep the king pinned to this. Go here. Now this is held. This is held. It's just it's just beautiful. I might even just leave all of this here, just to um, just to use the king and the pawn to convert. It's pretty funny. We're doing it for, for for humor points right now. I might have missed some kind of fork at some point, by the way. But they can't go check because of this. <laughs> this is the most outrageous way to convert this end game. Why the? <laughs> here, here. We're just using the king and the pawn. I got all these pieces. I don't care. I'm just gonna use the king and the pawn. You can't do this. I'll take it. Oh, but you know what? We're gonna use some of our precious 18 seconds to put the glasses back on. Go here, move the king up, and promote on the next move. Unless they pin us, then we're just going to go down here. We can promote. Yep. Yep. Take my queen. And uh, suffer. Suffer your... Okay. Check. Check. Mate. Mwah. Bellissimo. Beautiful stuff. Excellent. This was this was a really satisfying game. Let's look at the analysis. Okay, so here we are in the analysis. I will remove the shades right now um, because that is hurting my eyes. And if we look at the graph here, very just convincing win by about move like seven, eight, nine. We were doing quite well, like plus two, plus three, um, and then yeah, just got really convincing. And it was about the conversion, which I did not do very uh, very well. Apparently, I missed mate in three here and mate in nine here. But we'll go through the game, 97% accuracy uh, with two blunders, but I believe those blunders, yeah, the blunders were just not doing the forced mates, which we don't class as blunders. Going from, you know, mate in uh, nine to plus 6.6, .6, I don't care. Uh, so basically perfect game in my eyes. Um, let's have a look at the opening at least. So here, okay, so the master's database here, the main move is apparently B4, but black tends to do really well there. And look here, the third most popular move, H4. As you see, this was played in the game between Shakhari Mamajarov and Magnus Carlsen. Uh, I don't know when that game was. In 2021, wow. And, okay, Vladimir Dobro. Are there any other players that I'm very familiar with? Simon Williams, no way. What a goat. Love that guy. Anyway, um, yeah, this is this is actually theory. And most of the time, uh, Black responds with H5. Because allowing H5 from us isn't exactly very good, as we saw. So, minus 0.4, if we turn on the engine here... It doesn't hate this, which is really funny because playing h4 uh, on move 3 is just a beautiful thing to be able to do. And if knight f6, there is some line with e5 and they have to play knight h5. And if the knight goes here, you can, I think, play h5 and actually you're doing really well here. Um, but my opponent goes for fear and carrying the bishop. We play h5 here, knight c3 best move, e6, knight f3 best move, an opening played immaculately to then play h6 best, right? Oh, guys. This is what I want to see. An absolutely superbly bit of uh, superbly played bit of opening preparation. Basically, actually perfectly played until I move seven here. And now my opponent takes this, which I correctly identified after taking here. If we give the engine a second, it's going to think it's even worse. Yeah, here we go. It's just a mistake, especially after they play f5, because then, you know, you see as it wanted them to play f6 here to stop any ideas of bishop g5. Now, I definitely slightly misplayed this because, I, yeah, as I said in the game, I should have gone e5 gone here, put my bishop on f6, or something like that. Um, okay, if we saw here, oh my god, queen d6, what? Takes, takes, knight goes here, then we just go like this, this is absolutely ridiculous, what? You castle, why am I so winning here? I have absolutely no idea, but this is really funny. Well, I'll look at this in my own time and maybe get back to you guys in a later video if it's really interesting theory. However, uh, we took knight takes, bishop d3, and after they go in here, taking's the best. Because if they take with the pawn here, 
I was imagining, okay, yeah, bishop g5, but at some point, I guess I thought at some point, you know, okay, here you can castle, but at some point, if you give me this check, it's really bad. And so I thought this at least forced him to castle into an open g5 with my pawn on h6, so I thought this was really strong, um, which it was. He took here, and it wanted queen e2 check now, instead of going bishop g5 first, even though that gave him this. It wanted me to trade queens, because I'm just so much better in the end game. I just have this huge space advantage and an absolutely crushing position and castling and rookie one. Okay, it makes sense. I want to keep the queens on the board. I thought that would be more exciting because, uh, you know, I'm a content creator. And queen d2 here, they castle, I castle, and they push. And now pushing didn't make much sense. Bishop e6. The bishop e6, I'd have probably gone here. Um, okay, it likes bishop f4 as well. The bishop goes back to defend the pawn. Then bishop f4. Queen goes across. I mean, this all looks really pleasant for me. And very much not so pleasant for my opponent. Knight e5 here. Oh my god, and if you take, you get here with this. Queen d8 to hold the pawn, and we get we do this. Rook here. Rook takes. And then something has to come off the defense of the pawn, and we take the pawn. There are some incredible lines uh, in this position. But instead, they go here. We take the pawn, and then they give me d5. Which made it a lot easier. Uh, that was the difference between... Whoa, well, sorry about that. What the... Yeah, giving me d5 here definitely made it a lot easier. Um... After the queen goes back, we take the knight. And then queen c3, best move, awesome. Just keeping that pressure on g7 here. With our opening idea still coming into fruition. And after here, queen here. That's my mistake. So I had mate in seven. The move that I was celebrating so much was a mistake because of rook f7. I mean, okay, we don't care about this. It went from forced mate in seven. I missed an idea to sack a knight. It went to it went to plus what sixteen point three. Okay, I mean, <laughs> that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Knight here though could have been beautiful. H seven and then what? Oh my god, the king can't come here. Okay, I should have. I maybe should have seen that if we're being honest, because the queen has to take here. Otherwise, the king comes up and we can promote or we go check. Wow. And then we could either take this or we could even sacrifice here and then promote. Okay, that makes sense. I kind of just didn't see the idea of sacrificing this knight. Some of you may have seen that. Oh, that's so strong, actually, and just going through. Okay, I still like this move here, uh, cutting off the queen for the idea of this and then bouncing back to take here, um, which apparently wasn't the best move. Knight f6 check was the best move. I don't know what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. I think this was a good way uh, to convert. We just get a really winning position. The queen goes in, and it's very simple. We got to do this nice little dance here running the king all the way king f1 best move that's what i like to see getting the rook active the queen goes back here we can go okay i mean again i mean we blunder what mate in 10 for a position that's like plus 9.7 plus 10 that's not a blunder by any means uh, apparently the mate comes from this i mean how the hell can it okay maybe this is a better move but i just like bishop g7 it's funny um we take this Forced the trade of the queens, and now it's a very trivial end game. And remembering I didn't have much time, because here, oh, I should have gone rook f6. That's really bad. That is really bad. Why didn't I go rook f Okay, I don't care about either of the other two. Not going rook f6 was silly. Very bad. Because if here, I mean, we're just throwing main one, and it's just a net. They cannot escape. That's kind of stupid. Okay. Regret. A lot of regret in not playing rook f6 there. But instead, you know, I thought I was low on time, and I just wanted to go collect all the pawns. Uh, which we successfully did, and then, you know, just left. <laughs> got, I mean, got a pretty decent bit of advice uh, for, you know, being able to pre-move, which is tie all your pieces together, support everything, box away the king, and then just work with, like, a little advantage over here. And we just we went and promoted this pawn, uh, which is quite funny, because, yeah, just check here, and then after this, checkmate. You know, we, I'll take it. 9.1 seconds left. Not the best conversion, but absolutely the best part of this game is the fact that we went h4 as opening prep, 30-odd master games in this line, h5 as opening prep, knight c3 as opening prep, take, going here, waiting for the knight to move, and then playing h6, and it was all awesome. And so we, we opening prepped our way into a lovely position with a huge positional space advantage here. Very, very cool stuff. I enjoyed that game a lot. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that game as well. Kind of a shame that I missed that knight sacrifice, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter. What a beautiful bit of opening prep. Thanks so much for watching the video. Uh, if you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff that really helps the channel grow. Uh, I really appreciate all of you that are consistently supporting. We will be streaming 
relatively soon. I'm gonna start building the hype now because uh, the equipment is ordered. I'm gonna get the setup sorted and then go for my first stream where hopefully um, whatever day of the week, I'll make it like a regular thing. I'll try and make sure that the time zones are best for the majority of my audience. I've got quite a lot of audience from the US, uh, Canada, Germany also. Uh, vielen Dank for all the Germans there watching the videos. And I have quite a big viewership in obviously UK as well. That's where I'm from. So yeah, I'm not sure how I'm gonna line up all those time zones. I'll probably do it in the evening in England. But yeah, anyway, hype in the streams. They're gonna happen and uh, I'll be playing you guys in those streams, hopefully. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.